Greetings Scribblers, Kent Sean here, and today we're going to break down the 12 stages of the hero's journey, so buckle up. In last week's video, we broke down what the hero's journey is, why it's important, and all that good stuff. So if you haven't seen that yet, you might want to run over and watch that one first. Go ahead. We'll wait. Hey, yo! You're supposed to be watching the other video! Before we get into it, please don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the notification bell so you don't miss one wave in our riding tsunami. Are you ready? We got a lot to get through today, so here we go. Stage one of the hero's journey is the ordinary world. In this stage, we see our hero in their natural habitat and introduce our readers to the world they'll be exploring. Most stories take the hero out of the mundane and into a realm of danger and adventure. But first, we need to see them in their boring lives for the contrast to have any meaning. In Star Wars, Luke Skywalker starts out in dry, dusty old Tatooine. In The Matrix, we see Neo rotting away in a cubicle. The point of the ordinary world is to show where the character starts to set them up for the dramatic change to come. Stage two, the call to adventure. There our hero is just minding their own business when a big fat challenger of problem gets dropped in her lap. For whiny old Luke Skywalker, it's a recording from a beat up droid telling him to find Obi-Wan Kenobi. Help me Obi-Wan Kenobi, you're my only hope. In the Matrix, Neo gets a cryptic message to follow the white rabbit. Unfortunately, it leads him to a weird goth club where dudes are wearing studded chokers. The point is, the comfy old world our heroes know has been thrown completely out of balance. And we know their days of hanging out on the couch are numbered. Not live the couch. Stage three, refusal of the call. This is the part of our story where the hero chickens out. Confronted with a big change in their life, most heroes are not too keen about jumping in with both feet. Instead, they try to convince themselves they can go right back to slacking off. Luke Skywalker tells C-3PO he can't go off looking for Obi-Wan Kenobi. He's too busy helping his uncle with his seasonal moisture harvest. Or whatever. In The Matrix, Neo decides to let himself get snatched by the cops rather than risk climbing on the roof of his office building. The refusal of the call is all about fear of the unknown, and the hero usually needs a little encouragement to get going. For Luke, the encouragement is seeing his barbecued aunt and uncle. For Neo, it's a hot chick in tight leather pants telling him to take off his shirt. Or something like that. One caveat, not every hero is reluctant. Every once in a while, you get a hero that skips right over the refusal of the call and gets down to business. Stage four, meeting the mentor. Our heroes have a lot to learn if they're gonna save the day. And to get the ball rolling, enter the mentor. In Star Wars, Luke meets Obi-Wan Kenobi out in the desert. In The Matrix, Neo runs into Morpheus in a crappy tenement housing with weird antique leather chairs. Obi-Wan teaches Luke the ways of the Force by having him fight an evil flying tennis ball blindfolded. Morpheus teaches Neo super jumping and kung fu fighting. Mentors can come in many forms, but their job is to get the hero ready to face the perils of the unknown. And, more often than not, to give him a swift kick in the pants now and again to keep them going. Stage 5 crossing the first threshold. This is the part where our chicken shit hero finally commits to the adventure and leaves the ordinary world behind. Now the story really gets humming. Luke Skywalker decides to ditch his toasted family members and head to Alderaan with Obi-Wan Kenobi to deliver the Death Star plans. Neo gobbles up that red pill and wakes up in a bucket of slime. In traditional three-act structure, this is where Act 1 ends and the long slog of Act 2 begins. Stage six, tests, allies, and enemies. Here, our hero starts to get a feel for the special world their adventure has thrust them into. Having already met Obi-Wan Kenobi, Luke meets Han Solo and his hetero life mate Chewbacca. He also learns his buddies are a good in a tight spot when Obi-Wan slices and dices in the cantina and Han blasts his way out of a crappy meeting with Greedo. Han shot first, period. Luke also gets his first taste of action as they blast their way out of the spaceport. Neo meets the crew of the Nebuchadnezzar and runs training simulations to get ready to kick ass in the Matrix. This stage is all about the hero learning and coming into their own and becoming a force to be reckoned with. Stage 7, Approach to the Innermost Cave. 
our hero has arrived right to the edge of one of the most dangerous places in the new special world. In Star Wars, the approach is big and obvious as the Millennium Falcon, the most amazing spaceship in movie history, is sucked into the Death Star. In The Matrix, the approach is more subtle as the Oracle tells Neo that either he's gonna die or Morpheus is and he has to be the one to make the choice. The approach to the innermost cave simply means the hero must make their final preparations and decisions before they face the next stage of the journey, which brings us to stage eight, the ordeal. You may have heard this stage referred to as the black moment. In this stage, our hero faces their greatest fears. In Star Wars, Luke is down in the bowels of the Death Star, trapped in the garbage compactor, when suddenly a monster sucks him under. He is held down so long we start to wonder if he's ever coming up. We also wonder why Han can't find him in shin deep water. In The Matrix, Neo and gang are ambushed by agents and Morpheus gets his ass kicked and captured. The ordeal is a critical moment in the story where the hero must symbolically die or the quest appear to have completely failed. Here we completely bum out our readers so that when things get back on track, their elation and joy are all the more powerful. Stage nine, the reward. Now that our hero has survived the ordeal, he comes away with a little bit of treasure. This stage is often referred to as seizing the sword. The sword is sometimes knowledge or information that can help the hero out along the way. Sometimes it's just a sword. In Star Wars, Luke rescues Princess Leia and the plans to the Death Star, the key to defeating the Empire. In The Matrix, Neo realizes that since the Oracle has told him the future, he can save Morpheus regardless of the odds, as long as he's willing to sacrifice his life in the attempt. Back into the Matrix he goes, armed to the teeth and ready to save his mentor. Stage 10, the road back. Scribblers, we are not out of the woods yet. As our hero heads into Act 3, the stakes only get higher as the vengeful forces we pissed off snatching the reward come snarling after us. This is usually an awesome place in our story for a chase scene. Luke and gang are chased by TIE fighters as they escape the Death Star, while Neo is relentlessly pursued by agents as he attempts to escape the Matrix. This stage is all about the consequences of our hero seizing the sword, and it is never easy as they attempt to make their escape. Stage 11, the Resurrection. Here we go again. Our hero must face death one last time before they can claim victory. Similar to the ordeal, this is another symbolic death and rebirth for the hero, as they show all the things they've learned along the way and how their adventures have changed them. Luke Skywalker hears the voice of Ghost Obi-Wan and decides to turn off his scopes, shut his eyes, and surrender to the awesome space magic called the Force. Letting the old doubting, uncertain Luke die, he lets his torpedoes fly and is reborn as a Jedi. In the Matrix, they skip right over the symbolism and have Neo actually die as Agent Smith turns him into Swiss cheese with his hand cannon. We see the old Neo die and a new Super Neo born when Trinity confesses that he must be the one because she loves him. Saved by love! And finally the twelfth and last stage of the hero's journey, the return with the elixir. This is where our heroes enjoy the fruits of their labor and reflect on what they've learned. In some stories, the hero heads back to the ordinary world, bringing all the cool treasure and knowledge to benefit the folks back home. In Star Wars, Luke Skywalker heads back to Yavin after a rough day of blowing the Death Star to hell to get a medal from Carrie Fisher wearing a bucket of lip gloss. In The Matrix, Neo makes a weird phone call, putting the machines on notice that now that he's essentially Superman, things are going to be different around here. There are a lot of ways to show the return with the elixir in your story. The important thing is to make it clear that there's something to show for all the pain and danger our hero has been through. So there you have it, Scribblers, a quick breakdown of the 12 stages of the hero's journey. Understanding these essential truths of story can be a game changer when outlining or rewriting. For more detail, I highly recommend you check out Chris Vogler's The Writer's Journey. It's available free on PDF online. I'll link it in the description below. Stay tuned for my next video where I break down the character archetypes from the hero's journey if I ever get around to writing it. Thanks for watching. Please don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the notification bell. You can follow me on Instagram or Twitter, and please visit my website, kentshawn.com. Till next time, scribblers, butts in seats, fingers on keyboards.